so you want the cock. Well, don't worry. In this beginner-friendly guide video, I will be demonstrating how you can use this fish-loving healer and propel your team to the next level and provide some decent healing. I'll also be showing the best Kokomi teams and provide detailed information about my own build so that you too will have a build that will make your friends go, Nice cock, bro. Well, let's start by laying some foundations. Why should you pull for cock? Well, her main selling point is that she functions both as a hydro enabler and healer. In the current update, while healers have always been a comfort pick, since Dendro got released, her AoE Hydro application is more useful than you may think. Now just to clear up everything, I don't think she's a must-pull unit, at least shouldn't be given as big of a priority as some other ones. But given she's used very often for select meta teams, I would consider Kok as a mid to end game character, assuming you already have an established roster. However, since Fontaine, the nation of Hydro, is just around the corner, she may become more powerful as this new region is released. Let's overview her talents. Normal attacks, pretty basic. There's only three hits in the combo chain, though it matters a bit more than other Catalyst users since her burst ability actually interacts with it. Skill ability. This is the most universally used part of Cox's kit. It will spawn a jellyfish and will do hydro damage as well as heal nearby allies every tick. The damage scales off the skill level and the healing scales off of max HP. The best part about the skill is that the ticks happen very quickly and there's no ICD or internal cooldown on the hydro application, meaning every tick will apply a new instance of hydro. Burst ability will deal hydro damage to nearby targets, then give Cock a status effect where her normal attack will heal allies and increase resistance to interruption. The damage of your normal attack, skill, and potency of healing while in this state will all scale with max HP. But be warned, if Cock goes off field in the middle of the burst, the effect is over. Passives. These are actually quite interesting. The first will refresh your skill's duration if you use the burst ability. Since the skill has a duration of 12 seconds and a cooldown of 20, there will normally be an 8 second downtime, but this can ensure that it stays out for longer if you time it correctly. A4 passive. While in the burst state, damage will be further amplified by 15% of healing bonus. Cock has a very unique third passive. She will receive a 25% increase to healing bonus, but a minus 100% to crit rate. This got memed a little bit when she first released, but essentially, Unless you're a madman and gets over 100% crit rate, don't plan on critting. Weapons. Okay, so this is where things start to diverge. Because Cock can fit into many teams, what you use as a weapon and artifact set will depend on what you want to do. After some research, I've come up with three different ways that you can commit to a Cock build. The first is an on-field playstyle. In that case, I recommend the Chrototype Crescent, which is a free craftable weapon. A word of warning is that not all 5-star catalysts are clear-cut choices, since a lot of low rarities can compete. Her signature weapon, Everlasting Moon Glow, is perfect for on-field playstyles, assuming you have it. But don't lie to yourself, you don't have this weapon. Hakushin Ring is yet another good choice, so long as you have an Electro Unit. This one's also forgeable. For an off-field playstyle, for supporting characters that scale off attack, such as Ayaka, Thrilling Tale of Dragon Slayer or TTDS is a good choice. The huge plus side is that this is a 3-star weapon, and one very popular among Catalyst users. Another team you might be interested in is in Nilo Bloom. In that case, you will prioritize EM instead of HP. So Sacrificial Fragments will be a good choice for this. Farming for artifacts can be quite interesting. You can forget about how you farm for all your other characters, because unlike those units, Cock can't crit. So crit substats on your artifacts are borderline useless. If we follow the three branching paths previously, there's three different ways to build artifacts. The four-piece ocean-hued clam, aka her signature set introduced in Inazuma, is best if you plan on using her on-field or as a general healer. The Tenacity 4-piece set is good if she's played off-field and supporting an attack scaling unit like Ayaka. For Nilo Bloom, you can use the Ocean Hue Clam once again, or you can use Gilded Dreams or even the Deepwood set if no one on the team is holding it. Cox's energy requirement can often be a little hefty. Assuming you have at least one Favonius weapon user, off-field playstyles will need energy recharge in the low 200s, while on-field can get away with the high 100s. Regardless of how you use the cock, just make sure the ER requirements are met first, as that is essential to being able to use her to the fullest. The substats can be a little tricky. I imagine that the three ways you can fit into your roster form a triangle of sorts. 
and that your stats can fit into any position on that triangle depending on your needs. If you don't know specifically how you want to play her yet and just want a flexible healer who also does decent damage, you can settle for a 4-piece Ocean Hue Clam set with an HP% percent Sands, Hydro Damage Goblet, and a Healing Bonus Circlet. Because Cox's healing scales off HP and she gets the double dip on Healing Bonus from one of her passives, having Healing Bonus is considered to be better than just HP%. Percent. Now, I'm going to be mentioning this in case I forget later, but since she has a unique passive where she has negative 100% crit rate, any crit substats on your artifacts are essentially useless, unless you can somehow accumulate over 100% crit rate, so it goes into the positives. But that's a hefty dose of copium if I've ever seen one. You're mainly looking for ER, HP% percent, and flat HP on your substats. The other approach, and one I'm personally going for, is an off-field Hydro Enabler for DPSs that scale off attack. In my case, Ayaka. I'm going to be farming for a 4-piece Tenacity set, as that gives additional 20% HP and some attack when using the skill. Since healing doesn't matter that much in Freeze teams, as most enemies will be shut down permanently, I'm going to focus on prioritizing ER to ensure that my skill ability stays up for as long as possible by timing it with the burst to refresh it via the A1 passive. Of course, I'm still going to be looking for more ER and HP substats, and having a little healing doesn't hurt. For Nilo Bloom teams, you'll actually want to go for a triple EM setup on your artifacts, as transformative reactions scale off EM. In this case, specifically Nilo's Bountiful Cores. You can use either the Ocean Hue Clam, Gilded Dreams for more damage, or the Deepwood set, but only one unit in your Dendro team needs to be running this. The ER requirement is still in place, and it doesn't hurt to have a bit more HP for healing. Just know that since Nilo's cores will cause you to take self-damage, it may be worthwhile to invest a bit more into HP to meet your demands for adequate healing. Of course, you can also settle for a hybrid between any of the three playstyles if you don't want to commit hard into a corner. But this can run into the problem that in the endgame, while your cock can fit into many teams, she won't be exceptional in any one of them. Now, I won't be raiding my artifacts pieces this time around, but I will show them off. Constellations. <laughs> Skill leveling. So here's the interesting bit. If you only plan on using cock as a general healer or in freeze teams, then you don't actually need that much investment in the talents. Assuming you don't take damage every other second, the healing is usually enough to get you through most encounters. Generally, the skill or burst takes priority over the normal attack. I will level the burst more if you plan on using her on field and the skill more if mostly played off field. The normal attack can be left as it is, but feel free to dump some mats into it too if you wish. The usual commitment numbers for talents are levels 6, 8, or 10. This is because you'll need weekly boss drops to level past 6, and double that, and an absurd amount of mats past level 8, and a crown for level 10, which is a lot rarer to come by. If you're playing Nilo Bloom, there is an argument to be said about leveling her skill and burst more, since the self-bloom damage can amount to a lot if you're front-loading all of your build into EM instead of health. Assuming you don't want to run another Dendro or Hydro healer, it may be worthwhile to invest some more levels into her talents in order to increase the healing potency. Just like the previous sections, the team in which the character can fit into is quite varied, and it depends what you want to do with your cock. You can literally fit her into any team as a general healer, assuming the hydro applications don't screw with your strategy somehow. But here are the most prominent and popular teams that features this pink fish. One of the most popular Kokomi teams prior to Dentro was the, uh, Sakakuma team. <laughs> Okay, the correct pronunciation is Sukokoma, sometimes known as a soup team, where the idea is that you use a pyro, hydro, electro unit combined with an anemo unit, and it uh, simulates cooking a bowl of soup. Now, this team is known to have a higher learning curve and stricter rotation. I don't have the knowledge to explain it in detail with my pea-sized brain, so I'll leave a link to a detailed guide where it's explained a lot better. The plus side of this team is that you just need Kokomi as the only 5-star unit. The other members are 4-stars. For this example, you will go for the general healer route and focus on an Ocean Hue Clam set with HP and healing. If played off-field, one of the most effective and widely used teams in the Abyss at the moment is an Ayaka Freeze team. They'll admit it's not exactly the most accessible. 
This is the build I'm personally going for and will be best suited by a tenacity set focusing on energy recharge and holding the TTDS weapon to give even more attack to Ayaka, all the while supporting the main DPS with Hydro applications. You can use this build for any character that scales off attack, so units like Ganyu can replace Ayaka in the team. I might release a guide on this team sometime in the future as having Cock will finally complete the team for my roster, and it's been one of the teams I've been wanting to play for a while. Lastly, if you're going the Nilo Bloom route, I'm afraid I can't offer too much advice because I don't have Nilo yet, but rocking a triple EM artifact setup as well as something like the Sacrificial Fragment, you can trigger a lot of blooms with Nilo's Bountiful Course will also provide some healing to counteract the self-damage. You'll have to look up a Nilo guide for this, but it is an approach you can definitely take if you're a Nilo enthusiast. So here's my overall thoughts about whether or not she has a place in your roster. I definitely don't think she is a must-pull unit, but after some initial discussions after her release and some refinements from having Dendro in the game, she's in a much healthier state than 2.0 Genshin. With the Nation of Hydro coming soon, it's also possible that she may have a bigger playground than we think. Healer rules in the game are somewhat of a niche asset, and Cock is one of those cases where she provides more than adequate healing and enables Hydro very consistently. She'll likely be able to play a decent healer in any roster, but she does have some outlier teams that will truly make her shine. Overall, I think she's a good all-rounder healer and Hydro applicator, so I will put her at the golden standard of 3 out of 5. And always remember, pull the Cock, pet the Cock, Worship the cock. Thanks for watching and have fun with the game.